Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Layton's Loft. We are fresh off the national. We are back and better than ever. Super excited uh, to report on really what was just, you know, sheer insanity. Every uh, <laughs> every sense of the word, whether it be, you know, it's funny. Remember, I, I made a couple notes for my show today, Lou, so I didn't, uh, our show today, so I didn't, I didn't forget. <laughs> Remember yeah. the song about... Uh, from Billy Joel, I think it was. We didn't start the fire. Yes. So funny you bring that up because Billy Joel is at Fenway tonight. I'm just saying. Oh wow! I mean, I've seen yeah. Billy Joel a few times. You know, my wife yep. loves seeing him and stuff. Hey, what's up, Kev? Um, so I was thinking, and obviously, I'm not going to attempt to sing because my voice is still hoarse from the national, and and I also don't have a good voice, uh, contrary to what I what I actually believe. Um, so I was thinking like something funny. I was literally writing. Forget about like names of companies. I yep. started off, I go Loop, Alt, which are different companies, but then I go breakers, content creators, auction houses, dealers, collectors, investors, star stock. And I'm like, holy Christmas. Wow. We didn't start the national. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why it came to mind. I like cheesy stuff like this. But anyway, um, the. Okay. Kevin was asking what percentage of show attendees were masked. Interesting. I don't want to give a percentage. I'm just going to go with if there's a low, medium, and high, I'm mm -hmm. going to say percentage was low. Okay. And once again, we're not going to get into politics here, uh, meaning debating if it's right or wrong. It just was. Yeah. Um, hey, what's up, Rocco? But it was a great show. Uh, special shout out to two groups of folks. One, to the Break of Maniacs who we met in person. 1B to the break of maniacs who were not able to meet in person, but still participated either during this week over the last several years to help us, you know, basically build uh, our community to what it is today. Um, uh, you know, it was unbelievable. Nope, I think you just muted us. Oh, let me see here. Is that all right now, Lou? Yep. Excellent. I'm not used to getting calls in the middle of the loft. You know, people know by now. <laughs> I, I thought people knew. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, once again, uh, meet folks in person and then certainly online, not just during this week, but the last, you know, several years, uh, you know, it was great. Um, and then there's also seeing a lot of folks who I hadn't seen in a year or two because of COVID, because of the show schedule and the way it went. Yeah, right. um, you know, it was really, it was really great to connect. I feel like maybe in the past, what's up, Mark? Um, you know, in the past, you know, because uh, I'm always super busy there, I try to, to stop and smell the roses a little bit more, which is probably why I ran out of time, you know, at the end to, to not get enough, whether it be buying done or whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, you know, but nonetheless, uh, it was a blast. And I thought today would be really fun. Um, you know, Lou, we had a really great run before the national. I think we did on Layton's Loft of a variety of different guests. Yes, we did. Uh, you know, from, from, uh, you know, whether it be a break of maniac or like Ray Schulte, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and kind of everyone in between it was up Jim. Uh, and so I thought today we'd have a few guests on, but we were going to go in a little bit different direction in the sense of like, Hey, what was it like to kind of be behind the scenes with vintage breaks? And then also I learned a few things about Mark and Fittler, uh, who is very, um, was very fun to be around. Was a, uh, a you know fantastic part of the team. But man, I learned a fact or two about him that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, talking uh -oh. on the show today about. Uh, yeah, I know it's interesting, and he knows he knows we're going to talk about it. Uh, you know, but it, it certainly it blew me it blew me away, frankly. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, you know how it's discussed, and then we're also going to have Sam on uh, towards the top of the hour. Uh, what's up, Bob? Um, you know, because Sam was a breaking animal. Uh, you know, he broke a ton from the show. Uh, and I wanted to get, you know, his perspective of you know, kind of the grueling schedule and, you know, what it was like to kind of, if you will, be on the, the front lines of, of at, you know, being at the National and contending with that there was a lot of noise pollution. So for fact, Lou, like I wanted to do uh, the new podcast, Trading Card Therapy. I wanted to do the first episode last week from the National. But after I did Layton's Loft with you, as much as I had fun, I mean, <laughs> Lou, it was really hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it there was, was a lot of noise. Yeah. It was hard to hear you. It was, you know, so it's one thing like when you're breaking the way like Sam, J5, or Chris was, 
and you're talking and you're reading right. the comments, but if you're talking with someone and you're hoping to hear their feedback, right. uh, it, it, I just realized it was going to be, it was going to be a challenge. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was, so we it was difficult until, next, uh, until next week. Yeah. Just us hearing each other was difficult. Todd wants to know uh, vintage material compared to modern product. Uh, well, a couple of things. So first, congratulations to Nick Mariachi. I believe he hit the Jordan uh, rookie PSA 7. I know Tom O'Connor hit a uh, big break credit. I don't remember all the other winners, but I was reading Monty's blog. You can check it out on our blog at vintagebreaks.com slash blog or blog.vintagebreaks.com. I don't recall. Um, but, you know, uh, regardless, we uh, had someone from Instagram who won a Michael Jordan 8, courtesy of Buster and our friend Jason from Otia and the National. So, I mean, really, we gave away an incredible amount of stuff. Um, I feel like my voice is still hoarse or a little bit sore from the 1969 Tops basketball pack break uh, on Saturday for the National. Um, it was uh, it was really fun. And although we did not hit Jabbar, we did hit uh, Oscar Robertson and a Will Chamberlain. Um, and, you know, more than anything, uh, it was funny. A few folks before, during and after were like, you know, wait, like, do, you know, do you do this on the side? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you know, breaking? No, like, you know, are you on TV or do you do commercials? I'm like, no, if you're hiring, uh, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> there you go. But, you know, the, the reality of it is, um, all kidding aside, uh, you know, I, I believe this, not just for myself, but for, for you know, for my son and everyone in between and older, the, the more you're passionate about something and you enjoy something, the more your true self is going to be able to shine through. And I mean, your best self, not even necessarily your true self. Right. Just like the best version of yourself. And so for me, yeah, listen, you know, like I, I get how like announcing a Yankee game would be cool or, uh, you know, I'd rather candidly play, play pro baseball, but like that, that wasn't the cards, pun intended. Um, neither was uh, playing hoops, you know, for a living. But, um, you know, I would say all kidding aside, if you had to say to me, like, I'd rather be an announcer or dealing and, 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 and buying and selling like these amazing artifacts, I'd rather do that. Yeah. Um, because the way I put it to people is if you've ever been to any nice museum of any kind, really, like you know, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, that Museum of Natural History, Baseball Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? Like any anything, even like in your own town, right? If your town has a museum that supports, let's say, some of the history of the town and shows it off, you can't tell me that you haven't been into one of these museums and said, Wow, that would look great on my mantle. Right. You know, or that would look yeah. awesome on my wall. And like, you know, that no matter what, Lou, going to the gift shop at the end of it, best case is you're getting a, rep a replica, you're not getting anything at all, right? And so I've always found that being able to buy and sell these artifacts, granted, you know, some of them are not for sale. I had a few items in my case, Lou. People would uh, be like, what do you mean it's not for sale? And uh, <laughs> Beth, shout out to her who was working for us here at Just Collect, covering the booth. Like, oh, well, you know, Leighton has a collection. Yes, yes, no, I do. And, and in fact, I'm just showing off. That's why, in fact, if you look, most everything is priced. So if it's not priced, chances are it's not for sale. Um, but like, just like going to a museum, not everything you're going to be able to see, right, is for sale. Um, I didn't try to treat my booth like a museum, but I tried to have that museum element to it so that people would enjoy. Like, it wasn't just so straightforward. You came up to my booth. There was an experience to be had, if that makes any sense. There's kind of a treasure hunter element to collecting cards like this because it's not like you can walk in. Like, you could buy a print of something. Most anything in the world you can buy if you just want to buy it. But it's beyond that with collecting. you got to find it first, and then you can buy it. Yes. And, you know, we're going to talk about this. Maybe we have a minute now before we grab Mark. So this was talked a lot about at the show. Comps. And then what I try to do, and I don't want to sound like an old fogey, right, Lou? But, you know, listen, I have my own style. And I'm trying to explain to everyone that I was dealing with, not just, let's say, on a one-to-one -one basis, but more like these trade nights or like different group discussions. I'm like, hey, I think comps is one part of the equation. And obviously, depending on where you get your, your value from is a whole different story. But then, and I'm a big pr proponent of this, whether it be in vintage or modern, like on some of the rare stuff, Lou, let's, I'm making it up. Let's say the last one sold for $187, but the, and it was three weeks ago. But the cheapest one that you can buy publicly is $550. Right. I'm not telling you it's worth $550, but what I am telling you is, you trying to tell me that it sold for $173 three weeks ago when the cheapest one that I can buy is $550 right. and you're trying to get it for something under $173? Like, you should just waste your breath on someone else. <laughs> and I'm not trying to sound, you know, arrogant or cocky, but I am trying to be truthful. And what I mean is, is like, here's the deal. If you're just talking to a robot and someone who doesn't love cards, 
I get how it's like a little bit more black and white for folks. Yeah. But the thing is, is that most people aren't really like that at the show. The reality of it is the balance is different, Lou. Some of us are 80, 20, some of us are 40, 60, some of us are 70, 30, meaning in terms of how much do we love it versus how much do we do it for money, whatever the case may be. Right. But the reality of it is you're probably not doing this full time if you don't in some capacity love some, you know, some component of it. And so I just found it interesting. Uh, and I remember the card. It was like a black diamond, Dirk Nowitzki rookie. Not even a big card, but I happen to like Dirk. And I know it's a tough card because the black diamond, like chips real easy. And it was one of those things. I don't remember the pricing, but it was like, hey, $173 closing price. Cheapest one you can buy is five fifty. dollars He's like, I'll give you one and a quarter. I'm like, no, thank you. He's like, you're not going to counter? I'm like, we're no. No, no, like, you don't understand. And I'm making it up. Let's just yep. say I had 250 on it. Yeah, I, and I, I really don't remember the price. Yep. But like, if I had 250 on it, best case is I'm doing a two and a quarter. And I'm not saying guys only take off 10%. But what I'm saying is I like the card. I don't really care if I sell it. And I already know that the next cheapest one you right. can buy from mine, and this is why I'm making the point, was like $450. So I feel like I'm fairly priced because if you don't buy mine or I decide to keep mine, Lou, yep. and there's no other one on eBay, that costs four hundred fifty dollars. And once again, guys, I'm using round numbers for prices. I don't remember all the numbers, but I'm just saying, like, keep in mind when you're talking with folks, you can always argue. I try to tell my lovely wife this, Julie. Um, happy to be home, um, but all kidding aside, like an attorney, a lot, lot of times they're going to argue their their side. And I always remind her, like, I might not be right as the husband. I might not be right as the other side, meaning you know, other counsel. But yeah. I do have another side. Yep. We may not agree with it. It may not be right. It may not be factual, but it's still another side. And so that's what I'm trying to tell people in the card market. Like the card market's not perfect, even in terms of the data and the and the and the bid ask. Like in the stock market, if price yep. moves, there's still a lot of inventory usually. But in, in cars, there really could only be one or a few examples. When I say available publicly, yes, if your if your friend Jimmy down the street has it available, that's great. It doesn't yep. help me any because I don't near live near your friend. Right. Um so the only thing we have to go on Lou, is the data that's available to us. It's the current market. I mean, you could, could could buy a gallon of gas for two bucks six months ago or a year ago, but you can't buy it for two bucks now. So, you know, current, you know current you know market is all that uh, Yep. You know, what's interesting, too, is a lot of folks is, hey, you know, I know that you bought that out of such and such auction, which, by oh, the way, yeah. I'm not even trying to sell like some photos I have or whatever. I'm like, here's the thing. That's fantastic. And if I would have bought Apple. When it was first issued, I'd be a yeah. fucking gazillionaire. Yeah, but no one's saying thing. you bought All Apple. That is really yeah. irrelevant. <laughs> no one's saying you bought Apple. You got to show you me, know, sell so me that it, so cheaper. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I just think that you know you want to pick a group of folks that kind of speak your language. So to me, I've really learned, and I and I did this a lot at the show because it was just fine for me. Meaning, I understand like some people want to sell a certain amount or what have you. I had different goals in mind for, for, let's say, for Just Collect. For Vintage Breaks, a little bit different, right? Yep. But for Just Collect, I didn't have to say I was going to sell a certain amount of cards or a certain amount of dollars. So when people are making you an offer of, of let's say, uh, you know, a lot of money, but they're like, yeah, that's a lot of money. Sure, but I'm asking X amount for it, and you're only offering me X less Y, and you could tell me all these different other data points. But the reality of it is I'm more than okay to go home with the card I either keep it for investment, keep it for yep. my collection, keep it for a combination of both, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's interesting, Lou, I think more than ever, like you really want to be, you want to be ingrained with your community, um, you know, and the more you are, I think the better results you're going to have, whether it be as a buyer, a trader, a seller, um, uh, you know, that's just, that's my yeah. two cents on it. Right. Plus, you also have the thing in the business of the guys who are buying for passion because they want to collect this particular item or it fits a collection or it's a nostalgia piece for them against the guys who are buying for investment purposes or buying to, to turn it over and flip it over. So that there's that passion premium, too, that has to play in here somewhere. Yeah, I think, you know what, it's totally OK with um, uh, it's totally OK. Uh, sorry, someone sent me a text <laughs> if, you know, and and listen, I, the best way I could put it is like, if you have a cash price for something and then you tell someone you have a trade price for it, you know, I know the whole world is still messing me up. Like yeah. I get it. And I also get how I'm making it up. I've been to people's booths where they're like late. I don't care if it's for your collection, if it's for your, you know, your aunt, your uncle for the business, this is the price. 
Like, I get that. And I've also seen people say, you know what, this is for my buddy. And because it's for my buddy, I can take less profit for that card or that piece. That totally makes sense to me too. Meaning like it, it's, yeah. it's, you should be able to be able to do whatever you like. Um, speaking of which, I know that Chris Coe in particular, who's been a really good buddy of the community, um, wonderful supporter and a personal friend of mine, um, you know, was really bummed to not make the national, uh, but he is on vacation or going on vacation today. And I don't know if he's still around, but if he is watching, um, you know, I try to send him some soccer stuff uh, that we, um, you know, have been talking about him and I. So, like, I had a little bit of an idea of what he'd be looking for, and I thought I might buy a piece, too. I was just way too busy. However, mm -hmm. um, even though Chris Coe couldn't make it, I did do this for a few others as well. I showed off over the next few weeks. I was able to buy this 1966 Bergman SGC 9.5 Mid Plus Franz Beckenbauer, who's supposedly an all-time great in soccer. Um, when I say supposedly, I trust Chris Coe's word. <laughs> I just do not. I don't know soccer, nor did yeah. I Google him. I have no um, idea. No. But uh, it is a nice looking card. It's great shape. It's really nice centering. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to experience the national a little bit. And that's what I realized a lot of folks did through the vintage breaks community and to a certain extent, the just collect community and even a little bit late as loft was, you know, meaning our episode, Lou, was, hey, you know, I can't be at the national, but it's fun to hear the vibe for a few minutes or feel the vibe or to see what kind of crazy stuff Leighton has going on and the team has going on. All right. So there was a gap between the time you've been to a national and, of course, this visit to the national. What's changed? What What was your first impression of what's changed in the business? That's exactly why I started with the song. We didn't start the fire. We didn't start the yeah. national. So, Lou, the amount of different types of people or businesses, that is insane to me, <laughs> how different and how much we've grown. Meaning, like, I'm not saying there wasn't content creators two years ago. But now there's different kinds of content creators. There's content creators that, you know, focus on like Sasha and they just do the deals and they document that journey. Then there's content creators like the girl who's doing Pokemon stuff that Drew knows or what have you. And then there's content creators like Phil Hughes who does break a little bit, but he's really a content creator. And then I met the comeback investor like in the lobby. I go, are you the comeback investor? <laughs> and we started chatting and he's like, you want to do a selfie? I'm like, with me? Why? Yeah, it's funny. So he's like, I want to document the journey. So I'm just saying, like, just just um, content creators alone, there was a lot. And then different kinds of businesses, as I was alluding to earlier, Alt, Starstock, um, uh, I think I made another call. Yeah, Loop. Um, like, all, this, all these different businesses were converging, or to be fair, they were converging. Some of them had started closer to this side of 2021, Lou. Some right. of them closer to the side of 2019, right, and everything in between, but just a lot of a lot of action. Yep. Well, there's a lot of money floating around, so that's going to draw people. It's like a moth to a flame, right? A lot Absolutely. of innovation now, and a lot of different companies. We uh, we wanted to see if we can get Mark in here because I don't want to cut him out of his opportunity in a loft. Yep, Mark's in here. Hi, can you hear hey, me? Mark, how's it going? Good. Pretty, pretty good. Just kind of tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Mark, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey to the national meeting. Did you, did you fly there and drive home or did you drive there and fly home? So we drove there and then flew home. The drive was uh, 13 hours about uh, split into two different trips. It was nuts. <laughs> yeah. They um, stayed at, uh, what's up, they stayed over at a hotel on the way loop. So they wouldn't lose their mind, just their sanity. If they did the whole thing on the way through, you lose yep. your mind and your yeah. sanity. At mm -hmm. least only half of that was, was lost. Gotcha. So, so during the trip there, um, we S10 hasn't driven a truck before, and we were trying to figure out how to turn the lights on before it went dark. That was a truck was it, dark? The, it was a 15-foot truck. Oh, that's not, yep. What's up? Lou, it was a big boy truck. He had a 15-footer. And I wish we would have got this on tape. I got to be honest. I was, and I can talk about it and joke now. I was not joking then. <laughs> Sam peels out of our garage, doesn't realize there's like a big drop off. I'm like, <laughs> there's some serious fucking bouncing. And I go, I look at, I look at J5. I go, J5, this is not good. Like the guy hasn't even left. The guy hasn't even left the block. Oh, no, by the way, Mark, I'm not knocking you. I know you're working on your license. 
that yeah. day, and I know, and I know they told me before this. We're, this is all in good fun. Yeah. But I was very adamant about Lou. Hey, I wanted to not have the same people drive out to drive back because it's a lot of yep. work and it's exhausting. Number two, I thought it would be prudent of the team. Whoever drives out, leave a little early. Stop overnight somewhere. Drive six hours, five, six, seven hours, whatever. Finish up the rest of the next day. Still have plenty of time to get ready. So at some point that day, once again, I know they told me before. I just didn't remember or put two and two together. Mark's very casually saying, or Sam goes, oh, yeah, um, Mark, Mark doesn't have a license. And I go, <laughs> wait, what? That would have been an important fucking, piece of information. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they were fucking with me. You know, once again, I'm not suggesting that yeah. there was like any, you know, thing nefarious going on or they tried to keep it for me. It was just there was a lot going on for the National. I yes. did not realize that Mark was the guy in the truck going out. So meanwhile, tie that back to the story I just told you. Sam peels out of the lot, and like, there's no switching. It's either Sam gets us there, or we just don't yep. get there. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that was um, fun. yeah. Well, fun for you, uh, not fun <laughs> for me. Uh, at least where I stood, I needed some Pepto right after that. Um, A totally but, unrelated Mark, I question. To go over two things on the loft today. A totally unrelated question. Can you insure the contents of the truck going both ways? <laughs> Did you, can you pull out insurance? You can, but I'm sure there's like an asterisk. Like, yeah. hey, if you drive like a fucking moron, it might be really much more <laughs> difficult to get the insurance claim. Oh, sir, did you drive off the bridge? Or did you get pushed off the bridge? <laughs> well, you know, I just wanted to see what it could do. I gotta be honest with you. I don't think the insurance fucking company pays out on that. <laughs> or well, the driver guys, doesn't. This have is to what's listen. great about. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, guys, this is what's great about the loft. If you want to know why Mark doesn't have a license, you'll have to tune in next week. Ooh. Oh. I'm learning about show business, Lou. You teasing? Yeah, yeah. We're not going to tell everyone today. It's yeah. a big market tease. Yeah. What's up, Andy? So, yeah. So anyway, so Mark, I want to cover two other things with you. You know mm -hmm. which one's last, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, but the next thing is, I wanted you to, to share with the team, you know, meaning not just vintage breaks, but like, you know, the folks who watch us on Layton's Loft, Lou, I'm sure, is interested. The Break of Maniacs, I'm sure, are interested. Tell us a little bit about your first experience with the National. What do you think went smoothly? What do you think, like, oh, my God, that was much harder than I thought? And, you know, just some, like, miscellaneous facts. So my first impressions of when I went to nationals this year was the for, it was the truck drive first. The truck drive was like a lot of a lot of everything, keeping Sam awake and um, <laughs> worrying how to keep the truck from like just driving in the dark. We really didn't know where the lights were. Uh, we eventually found out. S N was oh great. My with that. It was great. Oh my god! Oh uh, my god! We ended up working. It, it worked oh out god. really well. We it got there great. Really, really wonderful. <laughs> yeah, uh, but when I first stepped into the Nationals and saw like the scope of things and how big the the venue was, and seeing all the other people setting up, it was like very like fantastical. It's like going to like um, like Disney World for the first time and seeing everything being set up, like all the the rides and stuff. Uh, saw all these people setting up their stuff, and I was like, we have to do this too. And um, when we started breaking on that Monday, I was like, wow, we're the only people inside the room right now. <laughs> and everyone else is still getting things together. And we're just like, that was the start of like the national like trek. And each day afterwards, it was just like, you know, um, working with S10 and all the other breakers, trying to make sure everything goes smoothly. Um, and I think one of the best things um, that, I enjoyed was uh, the communication between the breakers, J5, Gilmore, Sir Charles made an appearance and broke for us. Their communication with each other and trying to get things to working and, um, you know, answering questions of people coming by was really good. I was like, wow, this is the first time I've seen um, like a team working like this. Yeah, there's still hiccups every once in a while, but it was like really good compared to the other teams I've worked on, I've worked with before. I also really enjoyed seeing the excitement of everyone walking the nationals. Everyone that walked by was like filled with, oh, what's that inside the like the, the case? I want to know more about it. Um, some of them I think actually like jumped into our site and bought some stuff for it 
it was really cool. Yes, Mark, we call that marketing and conversion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all kidding aside, uh, Mark, Sam, J5, Gilmore, um, and the rest of the team, Lou, you don't have to take my word for it. I physically saw it. They were the hardest working breaking team at the national. Yeah. And what was cool is like, you know, maybe one day I'm sure other people look and like, oh, wow, I got these guys are just, you know, brown nose and they're up early, whatever. But like by a few days in, and I just talked to someone earlier today, uh, potentially, um, it was someone that I do business with. I didn't realize that they're on the wax side as well. And he's like, no, listen, man, you know, you have an operation over there. And I'm looking at him like, well, of course, like what else would you be you know, doing? But I realized that some people just don't, you right. know, they don't look at it like that. Uh, they don't handle their business like that. And so I just appreciate uh, our team because, you know, Lou, no matter what, right? Like if I sit here and I say, hey, you have to work, whatever. Like if people don't want to work, Lou, they're just not going to work. Yeah, you talked earlier so about the passion. It wasn't passion lost on me. You, you talked earlier about the passion of all this, and I, it's cliche, and you won't say it, but I'm sure everybody in that room will, and everybody at VB, the team takes the personality of its manager and its coach, and they have your personality, and they have that passion for everything that goes on. Everyone I talked to was excited about the national. You just knew they were going to go out and just bust. Uh, during that national and they have the ability to do it and you know j5 is a good leader for them as well and it's, i'm sure they pulled it off I, I, i'm sure that was the best operation on the floor yeah well i don't i don't take that stuff lightly uh, i'm very grateful and thankful uh lou every meal sounds like later in the week when honestly we were just like dead tired we couldn't like go anywhere <laughs> hey guys, who wants to go to Gibson's for lunch or dinner or a snack and, you know, or Morton's or, you know, like we did it up nice. We worked hard. We played hard. Uh, I definitely hadn't drank that much in a while. Uh, I didn't start drinking until later in the week, but um, <laughs> let's just say on Friday night at the Vintage Breaks event, uh, I cut loose. Uh, I was remarking Good. the next morning, uh, Mark, I'm like, you know, I remember doing the deal uh, with Rob Geis. I don't quite remember that photo. And like, I'm not... <laughs> You know, I didn't drink that much like I blacked out, Lou. I'm just not as young as I used to, you know? I used to be. <laughs> um, so anyway, Mark, we're going to cover the last thing now, which is the real reason you're on the loft, right? Like, I appreciate you working hard. Hey, you did a great job, but let's be honest, yeah, but that's yeah. not funny. You know, that's just that's just factual. But yeah. this this is like, this, just, this stuff's mind-blowing, what we're about to talk about. I, and so we can, Mark, Sam can testify when he comes on after. So I had heard this rumor, Lou, that Mark oh. was a good eater. And, you know, what I mean like a good eater, there's people who are a good eater and, like, they just order, like, a big steak at a restaurant and they eat the whole thing, right? Or, for example, they order an expensive steak. That's a story for a different day, you know, with Mark. It's <laughs> kind of funny. Um, so anyway, this is, this is, like, a little bit of a different direction. So, for example, Lou, when I was, like, 12, 13 years old, I'm the oldest in my family. I have a brother and two sisters. I vividly remember going to like the ground round, right? Yeah. Or like Burger King. And like, you know, I'd eat my hamburger and I'm like, dad, I'm still hungry. He's like, yeah, well, I got four kids. I'm like, all right, I know what that means. No more, no more, no more food. So yeah. I go to my, my little sister. I go, Fair enough. you done with that? She goes, yeah, I'm not really that hungry. Like I would eat the rest of her chicken sandwich. Sure. And I would go to my next sister, Raina Lynn. I go, Raina Lynn, uh, you screw you, you're going to finish that cheeseburger? Nah, I think I'm going to finish some fries. I wouldn't even like let her say it again. I would eat that. <laughs> and then I will go to my brother, Merrick. Merrick, you're going to eat that? And he's like, you know, my brother would eat weird. He'd like peel off bread and stuff. I'm like, going to eat that stuff? He's like, no. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a growing boy. I'll eat it. <laughs> no, I understand. That's yeah. a long while ago. Let's fast forward to the trip. So we're going out to dinner on Saturday night to a place called Boston Fish Market in Chicago, which is kind of funky. And it's not a chain. But anyway, yeah. they serve like the Lou. It's like a it's like a seafood butcher, but they cook in the back. Well, Leighton, who I mean, wants a Chicago fish market? Nobody wants a Chicago fish market. Yeah, it's, that's <laughs> that's true, right? And listen, yeah. I, that's a, you got to learn about marketing. So yeah. anyway, so so we we uh, shout out to my buddy Ryan from Freeman from Auction Report who gave us the uh, the wreck. So we go there. It's a little pricey, but like you're getting the fresh stuff. You can see what's going on. We're we're all excited, and some of us get like surf and turf. I get a king crab leg and a piece of fish. The king crab leg's bigger than my head. Uh, it's on it's on Instagram. If you want to see me, Leighton uh, underscore Sheldon on Instagram. Um, I got a piece of fish because I'm like, oh, I'll be able to finish that. Meanwhile, it was it was it was absurd. 
So I start hearing like the rumblings of people being full. I hear Sam on the end. He's to my right. Like he definitely got some sort of servant turf. He's got a good half stick left. Okay. Yeah. Serge Hall's across the way. I think he got servant turf. He's got some stick left as well, but we're going to go back to Sam for the play by play. So Sam, because he knows Mark already well, it wasn't even like I had to talk about it. Sam just kind of like forked it over to him. Like, here you go. I go, Mark, that's a lot of food, dude. You're going to finish that? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a like big, big steak. Meanwhile, Charles is eating his steak. He's done. Same thing, but Mark doesn't know him as well. Pretty much, Mark goes, hey, man, you're not going to finish that steak? Like, don't waste it. <laughs> you know, and realize we're on the road, loose, so no one's really going to taste yep. the back, or so I thought. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so Mark kills that. Now, understand, I have my king crab leg. I have this, uh, I really like grouper. I got black and grouper, Cajun, whatever. I eat as much as I can. I'm, I'm fighting, man. I'm struggling. <laughs> and Mark's like, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to leave that. Can I have something like Mark? <laughs> Dude, I don't want you, I don't want you to be ill. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, but if you want to try it, it's fine. So I don't exactly know, but Mark, you did take some leftovers that night, right? Yeah. So what, what did you uh, take with that you to night... the room? Just clarify, mm-hmm. please. What, 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 what leftovers did you take? So uh, on the table, there was still um, swordfish. There was still the grouper. There was still the um, the trio appetizer that we had. And there was like Which is absurd. a little it's like bit 75 of bucks. squid that was from um, <laughs> the beard. Uh, okay. he, what she thought was ravioli. And did you take us all, all his home? We, you, you, yeah. Did you? Oh, no, that's it. Wait, we, he's going to have his own appearance law. <laughs> okay. Don't spoil gotcha, the story. Gotcha. Yeah, um, so did and then just to clarify, you took this leftover food to your hotel. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what's the first all fucking question that I asked you, Mark, the next the next morning when I asked you if you ate it? I said, "Did you eat the rest of the food?" And then as part two, did you have a refrigerator? Uh, we did not. What was, have what was your answer? <laughs> and what was the your answer, answer? Was I ate the food and there was no refrigerator. The room was cold. It was like sixty degrees. You described the room to me at the amount of degrees of temperature. You're out of your mind, dude. <laughs> like, you could have been in the hospital, in the infirmary, okay. and yep. you're eating, like, leftover fish. Slow, slow. He's saying this with a straight face. I was losing my shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, Mark, where are you from originally? So, uh, I was born in the Philippines, but I moved to uh, the U.S. when I was two. So yeah. New Jersey? Yeah, I moved to New York first. I was okay. in Queens. And then it moved over to Jersey in like uh, 2002. All right. You realize that squid had to travel a day or two yeah. to that shop in Chicago <laughs> because yep. they don't have seafood in Chicago. Fully aware. <laughs> and then you took the leftovers and you brought them back again without oh, a refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> I just, I was Who always raised Chicago to Chicago and eat food? seafood anyway. I don't, I don't get that. It was delicious though. Like yeah. 100% yeah. amazing. <laughs> um. But I was always raised to not leave food. So, yep. like, whenever there's food left over if, amongst my friends or anyone I, I could ask, I'll be like, hey, are you going to finish that food? Um, I would just eat it if they asked. Like, yeah, you go ahead, try it. Like, uh, if you're familiar with Vietnamese food, there's pho. They have the giant bowls of noodles. Yep. I ate three of them in a row um, because one for myself. Um a third of it was eaten by my mom, so I ate that. And then my grandmother got one, and she didn't touch it at all. So I ate all three of them myself in one sitting. You know, even here in New England, oh I wouldn't Lou, take I wish seafood she was, like, back to a hotel. Even in New England, I wouldn't take seafood back to a hotel and then eat it. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't eat it directly that night. I ate it in the morning <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> oh, God. And, you know, I was still oh fine. God. There was no issues <laughs> afterwards. Oh, my um, God. But you put your team in jeopardy because you could have you could have gone the other way, man. It's like true. people, as Lou said, like that squid was not was not like born there. You know, what I mean? <laughs> he doesn't have family there. Like, he, he traveled, dude. He was like in the North Pole at some point or something. I don't yeah. know where he was. Eventually, yeah. Dom could probably tell us. He um, might have been in the truck anyway, with Mark, Sam. Who knows? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyway, Mark, you're you're a legend in the food department. Um, I could not believe. With a straight face, he told me he ate leftover food. And like, Lou, I'm staying in the same hotel. I go, but Mark, we don't have a refrigerator in my room. You couldn't have one in your room, do you? And I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, of course, I have a special room, whatever. 
no, dude, that's just staying on the landing, the, the, the you know, the window still. And he's like, yeah, I know. I looked at the temperature. It looks fine to me. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you like to live life on the edge, dude. You might as well yeah, play in traffic. When it comes to food, always. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. Don't do that anymore. Well, anyway, Mark. Mark, thanks again for all your uh, hard work. But please don't do that again. I, I mean, you can ask the team. <laughs> I was being sincere. I'm like, Mark, can you can you stop eating? You know what I mean? Like you're concerning me. <laughs> I get that. I I'll try. I'll try my best oh, to my rein god. myself in. <laughs> all, all right, Mark. Good, we appreciate good. it. Well, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. for all your hard work in national. Anytime. Always ready to work for you guys. Always. All right, we'll give us ten. Ready, a chance. To, eat, ready to eat? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I am <laughs> for today. I'm ready to go out and get food too. Again, I have to ask you, Coach. Though, whose idea was it to eat seafood in Chicago? You're in you're in one of the great well, beef centers in the wanna, country. I just, but I, I assume you've been doing it well, all week anyway. We, so, yeah. we not only have we been doing it all week, we had already been turned down by Morton's, by Gibson's, no, I, by a Brazilian steakhouse. So, dude, we, we tried to get steak. We tried to get beef. We tried to get everything not related to the sea. And it was yep. just not working out. And to be honest, we were worried about going to the fish place because you weren't able to make a reservation. And we were all growing flustered as a group because we had a pretty large group. We were all hungry, hangry, whatever the term is. And I say to the woman, oh, you know, can we make a reservation? And she said, she didn't respond to that. She goes, well, we're not very busy right now. I said, yeah. oh, that's great. So could you put my name in? We have a group of seven or eight. She goes, well, we don't, we don't do that. So it was like, and then if you look on Instagram, I posted today about my infamous Uber ride where my eyes almost, and my, and my heart and my stomach almost like got pushed out the front of my head because, <laughs> and my chest, because I, I was in this Uber where it was like a clock bar. I was in there with Gilmore and John Kenny, and we had no business being in there. In fact, the door almost didn't close several, the, the door didn't close several times. Oh my God. And it was only until like one more time where Gilmore gave it like one more look, like, oomph. and the thing is, is as I just said, he didn't have any problems because he was like, once he was in the car, man, he, you know, he's a big fella. He was set. Yeah. So there was times <laughs> where I was like seriously concerned for my, you know, for my health. Um, and, and it was just, it was very uncomfortable. That's all I can say. All right. Uh, let's see. I got to get, uh, let me, uh, add Chris here. I mean, uh, <laughs> it says 10, Sam. Get him in on? here. Hi, Sam. How are you? I got to change your name. I'm all. I'm What's all... going on, Sam? What's going on, guys? How are you? Yeah, don't mistake him for like you know the Greek god of eating. <laughs> he was just on. That's Mark. We're calling Mark the. Greek I mean, god dude, of you're eating <laughs> leftover seafood, man. I don't care if that was 32 degrees. It wasn't fresh. It was far from fresh. It was like 180 degrees. Here's fresh. Here's not fresh. This is where yep. you're at. And you dove in like it's a birthday party. Once the seafood has 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 cooled down, it's done. You know, you just leave it, right? Just walk away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, before we get into it with Sam, uh, uh, S10, as he's officially known from Vintage Breaks, Lou, I wanted to announce a uh, slight change which is going to be um, a little bit easier for our team at Vintage Breaks behind the glass to keep track of what we're going to do in terms of giveaways for Layton's Loft, and we'll talk about trading card therapy, which is going to start hopefully next week. So, gang, as you know, for a long time, we've given away seven prizes, um, but in order to do that, we literally have to devote a member from our team, potentially even two, because, you know, Mark sometimes can have some eating issues, and he goes down, and, you know, it could be a whole yeah, mess. No, no. So yeah. anyway, we have to keep track of all the names. We have to keep track of all the names individually. And it's like people get upset. We miss you, this or that. And so we all talked about the national. What we're going to kind of do is every week on Layton's Loft, Lou, and this week we're going to keep it simple, Sam. So the clue is going to be baseball. So that we're going to ask a baseball-related trivia question. This is the way we're going to do it, Lou. We're going to have one really uh, fun giveaway every week on Layton's Loft. Mm -hmm. And the only way to win it is to tune in at the end of the show and really the beginning of uh, Vintage Breaks show on YouTube. You can find us if you folks aren't familiar. YouTube.com slash Vintage Breaks. And the reason why is, Lou, because of our new strategy of streaming, we want to have as many people have a chance to win it as possible and be as easy for our team as possible. Right. So if you think about it, we're already kind of, we're expanding. Welcome Damara to the team. We just hired uh, her. She started, I believe, yesterday. 
Um, so it's going to be a little bit more efficient for us. And so um, what we're going to do on Layton's Law Flu is some weeks we might give you like a really good clue. Today is very broad, right? I'm telling you it's yeah. baseball. Other mm-hmm. times I might tell you it's about Michael Jordan, in which case, yep. you know, you'll sharpen your, your skills about Michael Jordan. So today is going to be baseball, and the prize is going to be a spot in our 1953 Bowman color set break. If you nice. look at our site, it's 150 bucks. You have the chance of getting a Mickey Mantle, which is great at PSA 5, and a whole other slew of either stars and Hall of Famers from that set, um, anyone from Roy Campanella uh, to Billy Martin to everyone in between. Um, check it out uh, right now at VintageBreaks.com. So we are going to give away a free spot in that. Uh, like I said, through a trivia question that we'll ask yes. right at the beginning of Vintage Breaks YouTube show, and stay tuned for to Layton's Loft for a clue every week for the show. So, Sam, let's get to you, my friend. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was your first official national. Yes, this is my first official national. <clears throat> You've been to a bunch of shows for us. Yeah, yep. I've been to a bunch of shows, Philly, um, uh, Chicago. I've also... Chantilly. Chantilly. I've uh, staffed a bunch of conventions, uh, you know, prior to this. So, Sam, tell the audience, in your own words, the difference of seeing and experiencing the national versus the other conventions you've been to. Um, Well, the... The other, uh, the other conventions are more like a sprint. Uh, you know, you work hard for two, two, three days, um, and then we, you know we're back on our way to the office. But the nationals was more like a marathon. Um, you know, you're there for uh, seven days, um, and you know you have to make sure you're you're good, like you're ready to go, like every single day. Um, and they're long days. So, um, I mean, it's all about knowing yourself, knowing what you can handle and, uh, you know, keeping yourself in check. So you're consistent all seven days. It was very intense. Um, but I would, uh, I wouldn't have changed anything that we did. Uh, you see, you just seated my question, Sam, but let's say Leighton goes down one of these shows with seafood poisoning or something like that. And okay. He- and he's off the reservation. You're running the show. What was the what was the one thing you might do differently in putting that booth up and and, and exhibiting a show? Um, nothing. I nothing. mean, like, yeah. I think our execution was really, um, you know, it was really good. Uh, we went down a day early. We managed to set up a day early before anybody else. Um, I mean. You're talking about uh, Monday was the earliest move-in day, and we got both booths set up, and we actually went live um, on Monday. Um, <laughs> Charles, I guess, yeah, if there was one thing, uh, we could have been a little better organized. But, um, I mean, for you know the staff we had on hand and the team we had, I think we did the best possible uh, job we could, and I think we had a really good outcome. Did you guys sleep at all during the National? Jim sleep. wants to know. Sleep is for the week. We don't <laughs> not, sleep. not a lot. No, and, just caffeine. In fact, I was super proud, Lou. So shout out to my buddy Scott. Uh, he's doing his own thing. So it's 6.05 Sunday morning, Sam. And I think I told you the story already. So the way that breakfast worked at our hotel at the Hilton, some, you, some of the days you could order off the menu, but they always had this like breakfast buffet, which was stocked fairly well with fruit, which, you know, I was trying to eat. You know pretty well and such so uh I'd, I'd be able to you know experience the marathon that they call the national so it's 605 in the morning i'm super proud man i'm like first downstairs i didn't set an alarm i was able to get up early because i'm super excited for the show so i go downstairs because like if i get up that early i need to get food in my body like right away and i don't drink coffee so i go downstairs and the guy's like the buffet is not set up it's basically what i understand i'm like yeah, but I see a lot of fruit there. It's like what I'm looking for. Uh, he's like, I tell you what, order whatever you want. I'm again, got in trouble. Order whatever you want from the menu. I draw you for that. Take whatever you want from the buffet. Because like there was no eggs yet. I'm like, I don't need all that stuff. I need, I need. Yeah. Like, I'm a fruitarian. In a very nice selection. Um, <laughs> so I see Scotty uh, come down, and like he's like, you know, doing the cobwebs thing. He's like barely awake. 
I go, Scotty! And he goes, you're a bright-eyed bushy tails. And I remember exactly what I said. I go, man, it's the last day of the National, and tomorrow it's over. Yep. I was happy to be home, thrilled to be going to, to dinner with Cross tonight. Um, but you know, man, it's once a year, and there's only once a year that you're going to get to see the efforts of everyone together. Basically, like, it's a show that's only one National, but the only reason why it is the National is because of the efforts of every single vendor, attendee. You know, I was going to give the food vendors a little bit of credit, but honestly, the food there is really gross. Um, <laughs> Uh, and this is funny. I, I'm glad I didn't discover it earlier. I'm walking around on Sunday. Show closes at 5. I think our promo ends at 5. Lou, I got cash. I'm ready to spend. I'm walking around. And I say to myself, you know, I really love a drink, but I don't really drink beer. I'm not very, you know, I will, but I'm not a big beer drinker. Right. So I go, and I see if it says cocktails and beer. I'm like, dude, you have cocktails? So I grab myself a vodka on the rocks with a splash of Sprite. I grab Sam a beer. Sam did attached to this. There was no room left in the cup. He was, like, challenging me. <laughs> like, here's a full beer with no more room. Good luck carrying it. So meanwhile, I somehow carry that whole fucking beer to Sam, and I don't spill it. I'm enjoying my drink and probably got a little loosey-goosey. I was talking to someone halfway across the room. I just drop it out of my hands, like half the drink. Oh, like, God. I don't understand. I make it halfway across the room with a beer and a drink. I'm just holding one single drink. Anyway, hey. it was a nice little touch that uh, they were selling cocktails, and frankly, he was happy to discover them earlier, you know? Sam, talk about, uh, because I know this from radio and I'm guessing it was a similar experience from you guys. You sit here and you work in the room and you do the breaks and you're talking to people, of course, but you know, it's kind of remote. And then you get out on the floor of the national and you're doing it in front of people and you're meeting people that you talk with all the time. It's really an exhilarating experience. Is it for when you get out of the room and you get into the public and, and you start meeting these people and interacting with them for real? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've said it a, a, few, a few times now, but my favorite part of the National was easily uh, meeting the Break of Maniacs Friday night when we had trade night. Uh, you know, it was a really uh, intimate experience. We got to just hang out, share stories, um, and I wouldn't have traded that for anything in the world. Easily my favorite part of the Nationals. Yeah, I know. It was great, Sam. So we're talking about it. Uh, we're going to see if we can pull it off, but we're going to try to do some sort of trade night at the Hyatt which is down the street from our office here in New Brunswick in October. We're still ironing out the details, but you know we've already been in touch with the Hyatt this week. Our boy uh, Ken is on it, and we're going to see if we can put something together. And I realize that some of you will be able to drive, and some of you will not be able to come because you have to fly. We're hoping some of you will come in and maybe go visit New York City afterwards. Um, but, uh, it, it, yeah, Jim, it was, it was wild. I mean, some of you guys, as you said, like Jim Hector was sitting next to me, when we did an interview slash, you know, just chatting from the national and like the guys have been watching me through a screen for several years. So it's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, it's always an interesting experience. Yeah. Next year is going to be great. It's going to be Atlantic city. But before we, you know, before we do that, we are going to try to pull off uh, some sort of gathering slash trade night uh, in just a couple of months, hopefully in October uh, before the weather turns for the worst here uh, in um, you know, in the winter season. And Lou, if it is if it is to be had and you can work it in, we'd love to have the soothing uh, sounds of Lou to join us tonight. Maybe you can go to New York City afterwards or something. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm virtually already planning on it. I, I just want to make this trip. It's going to be fun. Excellent. Well, Sam, thank you for joining us and telling us about your experience at the National. Um, are you looking forward to next year in Atlantic City? Oh, yeah. I am looking forward to not taking a 12-hour drive. <laughs> that's be a lot of fun. You got to yeah. at least get a partner with a driver's license, don't you? I mean, next year, that's that's the one thing you'd change, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would change that. I mean, Mark's a great fellow, but you got to have someone who can drive with you. Uh, you know, Mark did, Mark did his job. He kept me awake. There were a few times I was nodding off. I was like, Mark, do something. I was like, <laughs> see there are some stories this you is should not what i want to hear on them right exactly uh, we're fine we're fine we made yeah, it there. exactly made like it nodding off it's like great next year next year he's gonna have to have a cattle prod obviously <laughs> we're gonna have to shock him like you, you oh, can't be falling God. asleep man what are you talking about know. nodding off i think we'll be all okay right with that's another sam thanks sam all right yep. sam thanks so much later guys <laughs>
<laughs> That's so funny. Mark's telling stories about keeping Sam awake. Um, Sam saying you nodding off. It's like this is stuff you want to hear right now, right? <laughs> Hey guys, we got about five minutes left. I forgot to mention we do have a really cool early bird buy any spot promo today, where we're giving away a thousand dollar briefcase, thousand dollar briefcase, a hundred dollar break credit, and then the five thirty at the end of the loft. Of course, I'm a terrible salesman, Lou. I forgot to mention it fifty five minutes ago. I'm mentioning it now. You have about five minutes left, <laughs> um, Lou. It, it was a blast. Uh, Tom says hi. Uh, Tom and Ellen came over uh, to say hi, take a couple pictures, and uh, I would tell you. Once again, I'm not debating the safety of it. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just speaking from my own firsthand. It was really great to see people and to be a human being and yep. like eat dinner out. And uh, I understand it may be changing sooner rather than later with everything going on. And once again, not saying that's right or wrong, but we took it for what it was, which was, you know, an experience that had been taken away from us the year before. And I'll tell you, sometimes both as a kid and, and you know, also as an adult, as we're growing up, you need a little bit of like a, I don't know if it's called a slap in the face, slap in the wrist, but kind of, you know, make sure you, you're you not taking things for granted. And I'll tell you, for me personally, uh, I definitely ran out of time and I'm, you know, looking forward to improving on what I did for both of our companies being the leader, but then also as an individual, I want to make sure I enjoy it. And so, uh, for example, Lula, like you said to me, hey, what's one thing I would do differently for next year? As much as I loved every minute of what I did, I carved out a little bit more time for me. Yeah. And what that means is two things. One, I definitely would spend a little bit more time on the floor. When I say buying, it's really, I call it buying and bullshitting. Sometimes Shopping. I'm buying yeah. and bullshitting and sometimes I'm just bullshitting but not buying. Yeah. But I like, I dislike it. Like you can't shop for cards like that anywhere else in the world. Even if you go to another convention, it's just not the same. Um, so I would say that's one, uh, you know, one thing I would definitely change. Um, and then two, and I'm in a note, Earlier in the week, like I thought I did a good job. I didn't bring any ungraded cards to sell, which is kind of weird for me because I have a lot of them. But I try to, you know, I try to narrow things down. Lou, I was overwhelmed by the stuff that was there. And I was overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that I brought. So I'm going to try to shoot a little bit closer to the bullseye next year in terms of my focus, in terms of focusing not just on my companies, being vintage breaks and just collecting now card breaks, which we'll talk about in our future, you know, upcoming weeks. Um, But just my own personal experience because let's be honest, right? Like, I don't know that. Do I think that next year's will happen? Yes. Is it a guarantee? Anyone who tells you any other that that's true is a guarantee is lying to you because they don't know. So I just want to make sure that, especially for next year, and this is what I was going to finish with. So it brings me great joy that I will get a beach house again with my family. <laughs> and you can bet your bottom dollar that I don't know that Crosby will work in the booth for the day because they'll probably not like a daddy anymore. But we're going to try to get Crosby and Julie there for several days. And to me, like that, that's priceless. So I don't even know what we'll do, but just having them there is going to be is going to be amazing. The impression I get, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was, and this is the part I find interesting about it, is we built this up for a month, maybe more for the National. And everyone was excited to go to the National. And usually when that happens, things don't work out. Things are kind of disappointing because you're all overhyped for it. No one's coming back disappointed from the national from what I'm hearing. No, the only way you can come back from the national uh, is if you had an unfortunate you know, circumstance happen out of your control or if you just didn't go there and to work hard. You know, because I would say, like, even as a, as a consumer, Lou, in order to get what you want out of the national, you kind of have to put in the work. Yep. Meaning, like, you know, Getting a VIP badge is better than a regular badge. You get in earlier, get more hours. Um, having cash on hand. Like, how many people came up to my booth to Beth? Like, do you take Wampom? Do you take crypto? Do you take whatever? I'm like, yeah. I'm not, I don't begrudging anyone. I wasn't mad at anyone. A few people got a little crazy with us. But, like, at the end of the day, man, you know what everyone does take is cash. That's right. So, you know, once again, just making it a little bit easier for yourself. I had very comfortable sneakers. These ultra zooms by Adidas, that made a big difference. Um, I had, uh, once again, it might sound funny. I had pistachios and granola bars, like, available to me at all times. Like, even though the, the convention yeah. was running out of waters. Like, Lou, I couldn't handle waiting on food, a uh, line that would be 35 minutes long. Yeah, right. I was trying to eat somewhat healthy anyway. So, I'm like, you know what? Just bring a bunch of decent snacks. And so... A little bit of preparation, no matter if you're a consumer, if you're a dealer, if you're in between, it just goes a long way with the national because it's such a big event and it's very intense. 
Excellent. Well, we're glad everybody's home safe and everyone had a great time and uh, we'll pick up some business here and look forward to the next show. Absolutely. So stay tuned, folks. Uh, you can find Layton's Loft every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time and all being well. We'll talk about it more on social media over the coming days. Um, sorry, I was getting a text. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be launching trading card therapy. Uh, Ken, I know, has been reaching out to Lou and kind of getting some consigliere uh, advice on how we're going to do everything. We're still not exactly 100% sure um, the formatting and this and that, but I can tell you it's going to be 30 minutes. And Lou, what I'm be doing is I'm, I'm kind of going to be shooting for the bullseye. So yep. as much as I love telling stories about $150 haircuts, which, by the way, <laughs> I'll never do again, yep. um, or, you know, Mark's, like, incredible eating prowess um, <laughs> with trading card therapy, we're gonna, we're gonna. I appreciate you laughing. Um, we're gonna be more kind of shooting for the bullseye of cards and, like for example, for next week, I have plenty of things for the national I haven't covered yet, but I think it'll be great to talk about in a, you know, a very specific, focused card show. And yep. we'll still have plenty of great stuff uh, and stories to tell on here as well. So, um, look for that 12:30 Eastern time uh, on Tuesdays. But we'll confirm with everyone on social. Lou, as always, this was a blast. And I can't believe it's been an hour. That's what happens, I realize. If you bring a couple guests on and you yep. get into it, the show is like, it just moves. Makes it easy. Yeah, it does. The guests make it easy. Absolutely. I feel like they're doing more work than us now. <laughs> All right. So Thanks, everybody. Have